Hey you dusty woodworkers, how are you doing today? Hey, check this out. Little tips on doing a curved bottle balancer. I have two different ones here. It's the same template. I have this one over here and that one over there. The biggest mistake people do is they glue up a blank and this is just scrap boards and they don't figure out where this goes on their actual blank. If this is our bottle balancer, this is where the bottle actually balances, meaning you're gonna have a bottle sticking in that way. When you look at this, that's the center of our hole. If I put this on my drill press, it is not straight up and down. The drill bit is, this is not. If I had to drill this down, I'd have to, you would have to tip it at an angle. Meaning you're taking that drill press table and you're actually tipping it down. Here's what it looks like if it was just a picture. Isn't that something? Sorry I have to do it this way, but the footage I took got deleted because I couldn't actually move the drill press table and videotape at the same time. But anyways, you'd have to tip that table down and that's a lot of extra work for you. You really don't want to do that. You want to put your brains on it and do it the right way. You can, it's an extra skill, but we only have so much time to do it. So there you are. Curved bottle balancer, drilling on a drill press. You can't just drill the hole straight down without clamping it. If you notice, meaning if you have any brain whatsoever, you can see what's happening. It's on a slope. You have to clamp it down. You have to support it. Gravity likes slopes, especially when you try to drill straight down on something that's slanted. All it's going to do is push it. I had to slide my fence up. I had to lock my fence down. I also had to use a clamp. And then when I was drilling, this board was still wanting to move. So I still had to go down nice and slow. When I was drilling, I don't have to drill all the way through it. That's how far I drilled. I really only need to drill past that line because I'm just cutting this part out. All this rest, all the remainder is waste. So when you drill your board, make sure you have your board wide enough to drill it straight. If not, you got to drill it on this horrible angle. It's a lot more setup, it's a lot more work. A little less waste but we're using scrap wood anyways. Figure your life out. Good job, everybody. See you later. When putting glue on stuff, just don't think about glue. A lot of people just put glue down and they'll be just like, bang, putting glue down, look, I'm a woodworker. No, you're not, you're stupid. Think about surface area, think about how much glue you actually have down and make a conscious choice. Look at it, say, do I have enough glue for two pieces of wood? Also think about time. Time is money. If I want to put this board and this board together, I usually put a lot of glue down, smush it, and then I kind of do the little smushy smush here. It's going to grab it. It's going to slide. You can see it's sliding. But what I usually do is I usually twisty twisty and then I'm going to try to pop it off and then I'm going to see. You can see where the glue really grabbed. You can see it didn't really grab in the middle. Chances are my board's a little humped. I would have to make sure I put some big clamps on there and I also have to know and tell myself I'm going to need some more glue there. So I'm going to add more glue and I'm going to make sure I get some clamps with some depth on them and get some clamping pressure. When you're gluing, give yourself enough glue. You don't need so much you drown in it or baptize it, but you need enough for appropriate surface area and proper coverage. Get to it. And again, welcome back. After you figure your life out with glue, you put some clamps on it. Now you could put some little clamps on it like this. These are nice, these are quick, but you gotta put your brains on this again. I have six inches of board right here. This is about four inches thick. Do I really want a little squeezy clamp? 
Or do I want some big dog clamps that have some gripping power, some pulling power, some clamp power? You want clamps that have clamp power because, well, they're clamps. You need them. My glue up's not perfect. That's okay, I accommodated for that. I always make my blanks bigger than I need them. Why? I don't do everything perfect. I need screw up room. The big thing is, if you see glue squirt out, chances are you have enough glue. Do I worry that there's glue on the table? No, because I'm a wonderful human being that cleans up my mess. If I can wipe my butt, I can clean up my own mess. So I definitely do not leave this for other people, or I don't leave it on the table just to dry because it's protecting the wood. No, you clean up your own mess. Clamps, get big ones if you can. If not, little ones would work, big ones are better. If you notice with my new big wide blank, I have just enough space for this curve to fit while maintaining my line at perfectly perpendicular to here. So when I drill it, I don't have to have the table all wonky. That's no fun. Before I drill my hole, if you noticed, I made this edge nice and flat, and I made that edge nice and flat. Why? Well, another good question, very good. I want it to sit flat on here, and when a drill bit's cutting on here, I don't want any problems. So if I had to put that side through the joiner, I put that side through the joiner. Over here, I have it all cut out. So I cut that piece off, I cut that piece off, and bloop, a little baby balancer is born. And he's a little wide, but I can always make that not so wide. Thinner, I can make that thinner. There we go. If you notice, I didn't drill all the way through. I drilled just far enough. When that fits over, you can see how I cut stuff out, and it looks good. I like this bottle balancer, but again, there's a lot of waste. This is all we need, the rest not so much. It's made out of scrap wood, so that wood was probably destined to be burned anyways. Now we made something cool for it. I'm gonna be drilling a hole on this one and cutting it out, and we'll see what having a piece of hardwood surrounded by plywood actually looks like. So stay tuned for that. So this is what it looks like all cut out. It turned out really well. The hole wasn't centered, so I had to adjust my left side a little bit. So if you notice, since it's plywood, you get to see some of that glue, which really doesn't look good. But I've never done something like this before, so it is a success. It does turn out well. It's something you might want to try. Would I sell this? No, and this is why. If you look, there's voids here and there because it is plywood. Plywood does have voids in it. And if I was going to sell this, I would have to address all of those voids. So the labor I would have to put into this would make the cost go up. It's still a very cool piece. So, when you're doing your bottle balancer, you can do hardwood, you can do engineered wood, such as this plywood, you can do a mix just like this one, whatever you decide to do. I hope you learned a little bit. Bottle balancers are fun, either simple or curved. So thanks again, you dusty woodworkers. I'll see you next time. So, eh, frick. <laughs>